What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be tearing down a 1.4 liter engine out of a hybrid Jetta. So I've had this engine for actually quite some time. And what happened was a customer brought their car in for an oil change. We changed the oil. When they left, they started complaining about a knocking sound in the engine. My gut says it was probably doing it before, but who knows? Anyway, after a bunch of diagnosis and a bunch of teardown, I don't think the tech working on this engine actually found the exact source of the problem and the engine ended up getting replaced. So it's been sitting at my house for several years and I figured this is a perfect time to take it apart and see if we can find out what was wrong with it. Also, I've never been this deep in a 1.4 engine, so it's gonna be a learning experience for all of us. So this engine is timing belt driven. All right, tensioner. This belt, oh, you see the cam just flip? You can tell this has been just sitting for quite some time because that belt kind of has its shape. Dual overhead cam, and it looks like both of our camshafts have variators on them. What's cool is too, this is an aluminum engine, including an aluminum block. I actually think the 1.4 is an awesome engine for like Mark 1, Mark 2 engine swaps. So up on the top, we have our two cam position sensors, our high pressure fuel pump, similar to all the other direct injection engines. And then up on the top, we have our N205 valves. These are oil control valves for our cam timing adjustment. Let's get this cam assembly off. That is a lot of bolts holding that on. I feel like this is a race. I feel like I'm racing and I'm not racing anybody. Okay, all of our bolts are out. Now what's cool about this engine is the cams are actually like integrated in to this whole assembly. So we have our high pressure fuel pump here, like I mentioned. And then if you see these little holes right here and here and here, those are oil galleys to lubricate what is essentially the camshaft bearings. This is a really weird design and I actually think this is the only engine that Volkswagen does this with. The 2.5 out of like the TTRS is a similar design, but this girdle here actually bolts on. This looks like it's all integrated. Let's go ahead and get our high pressure fuel pump off. This is a very similar high pressure pump to what most of the VW Audi family uses. And I think this one has a roller rocker style, like the newer chain driven ones. I would actually love to watch one of these getting assembled. So what my guess is, is the camshaft is probably slid in without any lobes on. And then as it goes through into each spot, the lobes are slid in, everything's pretty hot. And then once it cools down, it's probably then seated in place. That's my guess anyway. Kind of a weird design and boy, I guess if you ever had a camshaft problem, uh, who cares, you're getting a whole unit anyway. Let's move up to the exhaust cam variator here and unbolt it and see what we got underneath. Uh, uh. All right, well, anybody that's ever worried about getting all the oil out on an oil change, you never do. Also, there's a spring under tension right here that I'm gonna try and take off before it goes flying and hits someone in the face. That was kind of anticlimactic, but I surely didn't want to get hit in the face with it. Take off this bolt inside. That's the wrong size, Charles. Got that bolt out of the way. Can we take our gear off? Oh yeah, cool. So here's our cam gear. Let's see if we can keep going. Oh, that is not a Torx. That is like a poly drive. All right, onward to the other toolbox. Let's see if we have one over here. Uh, I don't think I have the tool to take that out. Wait, this might be it. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I found it. T30PR. Also, why do I feel like I'm gonna take this off and it's like nothing cool about it? There we go. All right, let's hope for something cool. Okay, that's actually kind of a cool gear. There we go, that's something cool. So this is the adjuster. Let's see if we can, I guess I can't take it apart. But this is probably seized, one. These channels fill up and drain with oil and that's what allows it to change timing. 
which is pretty cool. I'm assuming that the intake cam probably functions the same. Now let's go ahead and just set this guy out of the way. All right, moving on to our valve train. Get that guy out of the way. Standard Volkswagen uh, keeper and roller. This is pretty common. We'll get these out of the way. Look at how little the valves look. And they only look like they're single springs. Let's get a thing, what's it called? Let's go ahead and pop this cylinder head off. Mm. Not wanna come apart, you do. Let's see if we get the big boy out. This is the bad mamma jamma. Uh, that did it. Uh, there we go. Normally I crack those loose by hand, but I was determined. Oh, Ooh, I missed one, thank you. Something cool is, check this out, right here is a screen that probably acts as a filter for oil. Neat. Right. That's a nice piece. That'll probably fetch about four cents of scrap. Okay, now we should be able to pull this cylinder head off. And we can. Little pistons. So this is a direct injection engine. Uh, it does not come free with spiders. That's gross. Two intake valves, two exhaust valves. These are exhaust valves, these are intake valves. And then fuel is injected right here. You can see that's the fuel injector. That's pretty normal on all the direct injection engines. What's kind of interesting about this cylinder head, it's common now, but it was really uncommon before, is the exhaust manifold is built into the cylinder head. It's part of the cylinder head. So this right here is actually the exhaust manifold and then the turbocharger will bolt on right here. It also is supposed to help with getting the car up to temperature much faster because you also have now coolant running through passages nearby. Then on the intake side, you can see it's just intakey. All right, let's get this guy. And it's also super light, which is neat. <laughs> well, I guess cylinder one's got a problem. Let's get all these guys out of here. Let's flip it over and get the oil pan side done. Got our oil level sender here and a million bolts holding on the lower pan. Okay, lower pan off. Oh, look it. It's all full of yuck, but that could be because it's been sitting in my crawl space for a long time. So who knows? There's a chain. <laughs> look at this tiny little chain that drives the oil pump. It's so cute. And get our oil pump off here next. Oh, but it does have a pump cover. All right, tiny little gear, cute. There we go. Ooh, did you see that little bounce? Watch this. Oh, that's the reason for the bounce. Here's another spring and a little check ball, fun. And here's your oil pump as that rotates, pumps oil up through. So that was the lower pan. Let's get the upper pan off and we should be making our way nicely to the crankshaft. Probably because I did. Oh, I didn't. All right. So what probably happens is that oil pump sat right here, right? Oil's pumped in, picked up from the lower pan, pumped through this galley right here into this space, into the filter, and then out and up through the engine right here, which is pretty cool. It's cool when you can actually see that kind of stuff instead of just assuming the way it works. This is our little windage tray to reveal da, 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 our crankshaft. We have our main bearings right here and then our connecting rod bearings. Something cool about this engine, where the bearing is for the connecting rod in the crankshaft is actually drilled out. You can, it doesn't go all the way through, but it goes pretty far in. That's done for weight, that's done for balance. This engine does not have a balance shaft, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's get some pistons out of this old girl. All right, we're gonna start with number four. Tiny little guys. Also, when I took this out, this is where the rings were lined up just like that. I think this engine was actually disassembled, then reassembled and put back in the car. These are also cracked connecting rods, which means that 
they're actually attached when you get them and you have to break them apart. So all these little imperfections right here mate perfectly to the other side, which is cool because then if you try and put it on backwards, you see it's not even close there. There's another one, cylinder one. Now I don't remember if it was one or four that had that rod knock, but it was basically when you disconnected whatever cylinder it was, ignition coil, the rod knock would go away. It was really, really wild. We'll get our other two pistons out. Where are you going? Get back here, you. Bearing looks pretty decent on two, three. Is stuck. And three. It's three. Ooh, is that chipped? Oh no. I found the problem. There we go. Here's number two. None of them really look like they would have a problem. Let's get our main caps off next. Oh, dropped one. Bearing looks super good. Well, technically it's a film of oil that supports the crankshaft, but this is what holds the crankshaft into place. So this car has five of them. Oh, look at that one. See, that one's got a little sadness right there. So I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna ask too, like how many miles were on the car? And I, I actually don't remember. I think it was at the point where it was like almost out of warranty or like barely in something like that. I wanna say in the mid thirties. Oh, look at that. Let's get this cooler here out of the way. And then I wanna take the primary oil separator off. Oh, pop. Oh, that came off way easy. Oil, coolant. So the coolant cools the oil. Uh, all right, now for this, I have to break it because unfortunately I put the engine stand right on it. That came off nicely. So a lot of uh, maybe thread locker on them. There we go. <laughs> okay. So this is a primary oil separator. So this gets the big bulk oil as it flows. Think of like through the PCV system. It hits all this stuff, cools, and then falls back into the oil pan or the oil sump. And then the PCV on the top of it should get the rest. It's pretty cool. Most Volkswagen Audi engines have a similar setup to this. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna get the engine off the stand and onto the bench because I wanna show you the really cool rear main seal. And luckily for me, this shouldn't be terribly heavy. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. All right. That's why I only had to go to the gym once for doing dumb stuff like this. Check out this rear main seal. I think you could probably even call it a module. So there's all kinds of little passages through this rear main seal. And then of course you'll, at the back here, we'll also have the E-Machine. That's the integrated starter alternator for your hybrid setup. Let's get it out of the way. Yeah. Let's see what the dealio is on here. There we go. And then, so this little guy sits on here. This is the crank position sensor. Here's your rear main seal. Okay, so I kind of glossed over a little bit that's really important to, to know about engines. So this is what the crank speed is read off of. This is the sensor that reads it, and this is the wheel that sends the signal. And you'll notice there's a big open space right here versus all these which are equidistant. Um, this is indicating cylinder number one. You can see there's a bunch of bolts here on the tail side of the crankshaft. And they weren't holding anything on on this particular engine. My assumption is that on the non-hybrid ones where it's got a flex plate for an automatic or a flywheel for a clutch, this is where the flex plate or the clutch would bolt to. The reason this probably has bolts in it, even though they're not used, is because it's open all the way through. 
it's not capped off on what is, I guess, technically the front side of the crankshaft. So if you didn't have anything in there, you just puke oil out of the backside. So uh, yeah, that's my assumption on that. Let's get this front seal off. That's a big boy. Little gear. Man. All right, did we get them all? Yeah, it looks like we did. Sanctioned pry bar. There we go. There's our whole front cover there. And now we can lift off our crankshaft. It's so little. Look at how little that is. Let's get this little tiny baby ultralight block. Did you like that move? That was a pretty good move. So we can check it out. Now you'll notice that there are oil squirters to squirt the bottom side of the piston for cooling and lubrication. Here is all of our bearings that all actually look pretty good. What I like about this engine, so this is our thrust washer. The thrust washer has the nice channel that it actually sits in, which is cool. It probably makes assembling the engine considerably easier. A couple other things as we wrap up here. These look like all for oil. This is all for oil. This is an oil control solenoid. This one too, probably for drain back into the sump or into the oil pan, which is neat. That's the passage through to that primary oil separator right there where my little finger is. And this is just a hole. Just a black hole of nothingness. So we pretty much have our 1-4 torn down. Now when this engine first came out in the US, it was only in the Jetta Hybrid. And since then, it has moved to become a more common engine, kind of the base model engine. I really think this is probably, as of right now, one of the best engine swap engines to throw something small and light, but you could still get pretty decent power out of it in a Mark I, in a Mark II maybe, would make a really cool swap. And something we kind of noticed as we were tearing this down this thing has a one, two, three, four, five layer head gasket, which is not super common. Most of our Volkswagen Audi head gaskets, I think, are three piece and they're riveted together. This one was just uh, kind of crimped together, so pretty cool. Okay, with that, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Now I have a question for you guys before you roll out. What other Volkswagen Audi engines should we do teardown videos like this? I've done two liter turbos, I've done a W8, this is the first 1-4, but I'd love to know what do you think would make a really cool teardown. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.